Hey, I'm Shane, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Sony G Master 70 to 200 f 2.8. This is an awesome lens that is incredibly high performing, but comes at an incredibly high price for the Sony full frame E-mount cameras. And in this video, I'm going to talk about it. So this is my Sony G Master 70 to 200 f 2.8. I got this lens about six months ago and it only cost me my left kidney to buy. It's an incredibly high performing lens, as I said, for the Sony full frame cameras like the A9, A7 III, and A7R III, and hopefully the A7S III when it comes out, or A9 II. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how it performs in both photos, video, how it auto focuses, the build quality, all that stuff. But before I get into the nitty gritty of the review itself, I'm going to just talk about the basics of the 70 to 200 zoom range. So, this is quite a well-established zoom range and you've probably seen a lot of photographers just walking around with this lens even if you don't know too much about like lenses it's a very common lens to see and there's good reason for that it's the bread and butter of most event photographers kits because at 70 millimeters this lens is a perfect mid-range zoom lens um, with a fast aperture of f2.8, you can isolate a subject quite easily. And then if you zoom all the way into uh, 200 millimeters, you get an incredibly awesome, like high-end telephoto lens. And most of the time, these lenses are very sharp and it's just an incredibly easy lens to work with and get professional images from. But as with all good things in life, all that functionality comes with a price. In, in this lens's case, that is the weight. This lens weighs 1,480 grams without this little shoe at the bottom. It's an incredibly heavy lens. And when you compare it to the itty bitty Sony mirrorless cameras, it's a kind of a joke looking at the two of them together because of how big the weight difference is. But all that weight is not wasted. This lens has incredible glass in it. It's made of a solid metal design and it's absolutely a tank. It's completely weather sealed with a weather sealing gasket at the back and the zoom ring and the focus, focus ring are both internally sealed as well with an awesome huge fluoride front element and it completely is like easy to use and easy to clean. It's gone in the rain, I've had no issues with it, and it absolutely lives up to the G Master standard that Sony has set. You'll notice on the side of the lens that there's a few switches. There are all the standard switches, like your focus limiter, your manual focus toggle, as well as your different stabilization modes. And there are three separate buttons that all do the same thing on the lens that are reprogrammable to whatever you want. I have mine set to focusing so that it's another area where I can use my back button autofocus on the camera. The front element is a 77 millimeter filter thread, which is very standard and it's easy to find filters for. And the, the tripod mount at the bottom is easy. It's a toolless design actually that you can just pop off on the fly and it's quite novel. And underneath it, there is another uh, quarter inch screw head. So you can mount the tripod directly to the camera if you desire. And it cuts down on a bit of space then and makes it a little bit more streamlined in your kit. So overall, the build quality is absolutely perfect. The issue is, is that the size is just obscene and it really takes away all the advantages you might get from having a small mirrorless body. I'll move on now to the image quality. And this lens is absolutely insanely sharp. It is, according to DxO Mark, the sharpest 70 to 200 lens on the market right now. And I'd have to agree with that. I've never had an issue with the sharpness this lens gives me. At f2.8, this lens is incredibly sharp with very minimal edge dullness in the corners. And if you stop it down to f5.6 or f4 even, the lens reaches pretty much its peak sharpness. And if you're taking landscape photos and you want to stop it down a bit, you can absolutely pixel peep the heck out of these images and you just keep, keep, keep going. And it's actually really fun. I use it on my Sony a7R 3 quite often when I'm doing landscape work 
and it's really cool. For weddings though, if you're shooting at f2.8, you'll find that it's absolutely sharp enough and you'll never need to stop it down to get sharpness. It just performs as you would expect a lens of this caliber to do. In terms of vignetting, it's virtually unnoticeable. You'll notice it more at 70 millimeters. It's easily correctable in Lightroom and quite honestly, it's forgettable if you actually are correcting it or not. And distortion is virtually non-existent, especially at 200 millimeters. As far as chromatic aberration and flaring goes, the coatings in this lens are phenomenal. And it seems like they took a page out of Zeiss's book almost with how nice the contrast is in like heavily backlit situations. The minimum focusing distance of this lens is about three feet or a meter, which is actually very short for a 7200 lens. But with that said, it doesn't really matter too much because if you're shooting that close with this lens, it's really difficult because your subject is going to be absolutely filling the frame. It's not close enough to be considered a macro lens by any means, but you're never going to be limited by the minimum focusing distance. Another nice thing about it is how nice the out of focus areas render with this lens. The biggest con that I could say about the lens is sometimes it's too clinical. It's really almost perfect in the background with a perfect gradient and there's very little character um, that you'd find on older lenses, which is not a fault of the lens, it's just that good. So it's like a, a very neutral image you get from it just because of how sterile the background feels sometimes. The thing that really sets this lens apart from the competition, besides the sharpness, is its autofocusing performance. It features a, give me a moment, a double linear in ring supersonic wave motor actuators. Hmm. Those are fancy words for it has a very modern and fast autofocusing motors in it. This drives the heavy glass of the lens quite quickly, so you don't actually notice that this lens has such huge elements inside it. And it focuses super quick, which is awesome because while I'm using it for photography, I almost never miss a shot. And when I do, it's pretty much only just because I'm not using the lens well enough. It's not the lens's fault. It's usually just I'm focusing on the wrong part of the image and it autofocuses on where I point it. So really, it's, it's no issue. In video, it's very smooth and it can pull focus very easily. The one hiccup I do find is when you put it into manual focus, this is actually the first Sony lens I bought that isn't fully electronic. And I always rant about how I don't love electronic focus systems. However, because of the extreme like zoom range on this lens, the manually focusing with it has a very overall short focus throw um, when you're turning the ring. It's a photography lens though, it's not a cine lens. So it makes sense that it would have the shorter focus throw. The biggest issue though I find is that sometimes if I'm starting to focus on something, it can be a little bit of too much resistance and I find I'm turning the lens and then Ooh, I accidentally turned it too much and I'm just kind of jumping. This is more something to get used to, less of an issue with the lens. And again, it's a photography lens, it's an autofocus lens. That's what it's good at. For manually focusing, it's just not an ideal experience. So it kind of is what it is. I think I've pretty well now established that functionally, the 70 to 200 F2.8 G Master is an incredibly high performing lens. But as I started this video with, that performance comes with a price tag. And that is an insane 2,600 US dollars or 3,300 Canadian, which is the most expensive lens I own personally. And it's one of the most expensive Sony lenses that isn't one of their extreme prime lenses. Um, it's just an incredibly pricey lens. And that mainly is because of the R&D that went into making this lens and also just how high quality the components are in that it resolves up to 100 megapixels. Um, so it's very future safe if you're buying this lens and it's going to be a lens that you keep with you as you move through Sony cameras. 
is Sony's intention with this lens. It's the best of the best. But compared to other manufacturers, it's a pretty insane price tag because Canon's best 70 to 200 right now is $1,900 and Nikon's best is $2,200 US. And both of those lenses though are very old designs and they've been making them for quite a while, which would reduce the production costs. And just generally speaking, they're not as sharp and they don't autofocus as fast as the Sony option. But with that said, Nikon and Canon both will be coming out within the year with new mirrorless versions of their 70 to 200 lenses, which appear to have novel new designs, which I can only assume compared to the previous lenses they've released for their mirrorless systems will be a very comparable price to Sony's option. So I'm going to talk about how this lens compares to other lenses, but I'm not going to talk about other brands. I'm just going to talk about the two biggest competitors Sony has to it in their own lineup. And that is the 70 to 200 F4 in the 100 to 400 F4.5 to 5.6. And I'm going to briefly just talk about how this lens compares to using, using something like a 135 millimeter prime or an 85 millimeter prime lens. So starting off with the biggest competitor to this lens, and it's the 70 to 200 F4. So when I say competitor, I don't mean it in the sense that they're in the same class. This lens is almost double the price as the F4 option. And the F4 comes in at roughly 1400 US dollars right now, or 1700 Canadian, which is like half the price. But honestly, it's pretty much half the lens. I mean that in terms of weight. The lens is half the weight of this sillyly heavy G Master, which is awesome. If you're someone who's on the go and likes to travel, this lens is super hard to travel with. I've done it. It's heavy. But if you're taking it with you on a trip, um, the F4 is much lighter. The catch is, though, it's an F4. So that means you're roughly getting just about half as much light on your sensor in any given situation as the f2.8 will get you. And with that lower aperture, unfortunately, the f4 option is slightly less sharp, which results in this lens being both letting in more light. And if you put this one at f4, it's significantly sharper than the 70 to 200 f4 at its lowest aperture f4. So you're, you're paying for a higher performing lens, but you just need to know if you need that or not. If say you're an outdoor photographer or someone who does a lot of a little bit slower paced stuff, landscapes or outdoor weddings, and there's plenty of available light, I think the F4 option is your better option. However, if you're someone who does a lot of like sports or does a lot of indoor weddings or events and a lot of like portrait work where you really want a, a sharper lens and a higher performing lens, the G Master is gonna be your better option because it has just that extra performance. But it comes at that extra price. You can pretty much get another lens with the F4 option of this lens and still be cheaper than the G Master. So again, hard to compare them. Um, I'd recommend heavily looking at the F4. Um, I did for quite a while before I pulled the trigger on buying the G Master. The other option is this lens's kind of sister lens, and that is the 100 to 400 F4.5 to 5.6 G Master. In terms of build, pretty much they almost look the exact same. Um, the 100 to 400 actually only has one big difference and that is the front element extends when it zooms, but that's just because it's like double the focal range. It also is a much different aperture. Um, it is a variable aperture, which means that when you're at 100, you're at 4.5, but when you're at 400, you have 5.6, um, which is very reasonable because um, 400 is a very long focal length. And if you're familiar with the 400 f 2.8, that lens is extremely expensive. So the 100 to 400 is more tailored for wildlife or sports or outdoor things where your subject is very far away from you. And they could be close to you, they could be very far away from you, and you want to kind of cover that range, but you need a lot of light because again, the um, smaller aperture on it. 
but the f2.8 is really designed for that mid telephoto range, the 70 to 200. So you're using that in indoor situations or areas where you just need a little bit more tight versatility. So the lenses don't have a great one-to-one -one comparison. They're made for different applications. Um, and I think if you're looking at the two lenses, you know if you're a wildlife photographer, I think the, seven, the 100 to 400 might be a better option. However, if you're looking at the 70 to 200, there is the option of getting a two times teleconverter or a 1.4 times teleconverter that the two times drops it to an F5.6, but a 100 to 400, sorry, 140 to 400 millimeter zoom range, which is pretty darn awesome. And in the future, I hope to try that out, but right now I don't have it. I have no experience with it but it makes the two lenses a lot more comparable if you add the teleconverter into the situation. However, you can always just put the teleconverter on the 100 to 400, turning it into a freaking 800 millimeter, which is, again, pretty cool. But that's a story for another day. The last thing I wanna talk about is how this lens compares to something like a prime lens. Often, I find myself using prime lenses um, very often in my work. And I have this good old 85 millimeter that I pretty much use 80% of the time. And I use this very rarely. Um, the big thing is, is that these two lenses, like if you look at them side by side, like they can't compare in size. And that's a big thing for me. When I'm doing weddings or if I'm just casually shooting even, um, it's nicer having the smaller lens. And this lens is a $900 Canadian lens versus 3300 Canadian you can get like a full lens lineup or another camera with a lens rather than this lens itself. So just make sure that if you're shopping for this lens, just because you think that all professional photographers need it, I don't think that trope is actually true. Everyone shoots their own photography differently and there's no reason to fall into what other people do. So I think kind of, Think if it's right for you, um, not because you need to get it just because it's required for the job, because realistically, it's probably not. And you can get away with using an 85 millimeter. And again, I went a whole year with just using pretty much this lens for half my photography, and I still use it very often. This is just more for when I'm doing video work or if I'm traveling and I want to have a zoom lens for when I'm in the mountains or something. So overall, I think you get the point. This lens is a lens that makes no sacrifices. It's an incredibly awesome lens and it only has like a few drawbacks to it. Um, the biggest thing is the price and it's just expensive. And you just need to make sure you know if this lens is the right lens for you. Personally, I don't regret buying it, but I certainly wish I could use it more than I do because of how expensive it is. But if you're gonna be purchasing this lens, I do not think you'll be disappointed with it. It's an absolutely stellar lens and it basically has um, the only flaw being the incredible weight. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. This one took quite a while to make because I couldn't make up my mind on this lens. Um, I love it, but it's just hard to recommend because of the price. I hope you uh, got some good information from this video. If I missed anything that you have about this lens or you have insights that I don't know about, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I, I just wanna help as many people as I can. <laughs> um, and I really appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment, like, subscribe maybe. Um, it really helps me make more content and I enjoy doing this so much. So anyways, I hope you have an awesome day and take care.